Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Ben Strader here back with you at EFI University doing another one of the videos in our series called How Not to Be an Idiot. Just a fun little series we're doing to try and help educate people on things that get thrown around the internet. So if you got offended, this might not be the video for you, but we're not calling you an idiot. We're saying here's how you can talk and sound smart and not sound like an idiot. But one of the topics that always comes up is the subject of pump gas tune-ups for performance or racing vehicles. Now, a pump gas tune-up is usually one that's pretty conservative because you just can't really tell what the quality of fuel that you're going to be getting is. But what you need to be careful about is understanding how those fuels affect your engine and why you have to keep track of your tune-up. So what I've done is I've printed out two technical data sheets for some racing fuels just to show you some specific differences between them and give you some context of how they would change. And then I want to relate that to what happens in the pump gas industry. So I've printed off some from VP Racing and two kinds of fuels that we use a lot here on the dyno are VP's Q16 and VP's C45. Now these are drastically different fuels, um, but both can be really helpful in making a lot of power in a high compression ratio or a high speed racing engine. So one of the things that we always look at is what's called the distillation curve or a chart that's basic or a curve that's basically printed out that tells us at what temperature the fuel will begin to evaporate and change from a liquid to a vapor form. Now, depending on how easily that fuel will vaporize, it will exert pressure or which can be measured through a test they call the reed vapor pressure test. So when you have a fuel that's very volatile, it will typically tend to start boiling or evaporating at a much lower temperature and therefore it exerts more pressure on the atmosphere around it so it will tend to have a much higher reed vapor pressure number. And the opposite is true of a fuel that will vaporize at a lower temperature, or sorry, a higher temperature, you know what I'm trying to say, um, and your vapor pressure will be lower. So let's take a look at our two fuels here. On Q16, we have a reed vapor pressure of 6.76 PSI. That's relatively low, and we can see that in our distillation curve. So we have 10%, 50%, 90% fully evaporated, and then the end point when all of the fuel would be evaporated. And they give us temperatures for where that would happen. So this particular fuel Q16 doesn't start to have 10% of its total uh, evaporation until 141 degrees Fahrenheit. If I look over here at my C45 fuel, I see that the 10% point on that fuel happens as low as 111.4. So you know, roughly 40 degrees colder when we start evaporating this C45 than we do the Q16. So you can see it's got a reed vapor pressure of 11.3 PSI. Not quite, but almost twice the vapor pressure. So what will typically happen is you can go all the way down the curve, 10, 50, 90 at the end point, you'll see that all those temperatures happen much lower. So the total reed vapor pressure value for a C45 fuel will be higher than for a Q16 fuel where all those temperatures are a lot higher. So what happens is, if you think about how to compare those two, well, Q16 compared to C45 typically could be harder to get started in really cold weather. You'll generally get better fuel economy and break specific fuel consumption numbers simply because it's not evaporating as much out of your tank and you're not losing as much. Um, you will tend to get a little more plug fouling and a little more oil dilution with a fuel like this that needs a lot of temperature to evaporate. Um, as opposed to our C45, where it cold starts really well. It does hurt my fuel economy a little bit and my brake specific numbers aren't quite as good because we get a lot of evaporation and loss of fuel in the tank, but it doesn't foul, foul the plugs as much, doesn't dilute the oil as much, our combustion chamber stays clean. But here's the thing. When I have a fuel like that, that has a really easy time evaporating, I have to be very careful about changes in the weather. If I go out to the racetrack in the morning and I've got my tune-up on kill, and then late in the afternoon the temperatures and barometric pressures have changed, all of a sudden I could have a fuel that's too easy to vaporize. My flame propagation speed in the combustion chamber will be much faster. It will have the same effect as if my engine had too much ignition time. So when you have a fuel like this, it's great for trying to make maximum all-out power, but you do have to stay on top of the tune-up a lot more than a fuel like a Q16 that's a little more forgiving on the tune-up, especially in high boost applications, high compression ratio, high RPM. So now take that and think about it in the context of you taking your car and getting a pump gas tune-up at a local dyno shop in, say, Georgia. The gas that you buy at the pump is regulated by the federal government as part of the Clean Air Act from the EPA. And they go around the country and they have a different specification for the amount of reed vapor pressure that is mandated or allowable for the gas station to sell you. 
as it turns out, there's as many as 40 or 50 different active, you know, mandated blends, depending on where you are in the country on any given day, depending on the time of year, the colder times of the year, they'll have a, a fuel that will obviously have a much higher vapor pressure than in the summer time of the year where the EPA doesn't want that fuel boiling off and, you know, polluting the atmosphere and stuff like that. Bottom line is if you're gonna get a pump gas tune-up for your car, you really need to be aware of the local region where you are using that pump gas from and stay on top of the tune-up if you change to a different location or a different time of the year. So that was a pretty long video filled with a lot of tech and, and stuff. So watch it a couple times, get educated on the tub subject. And then when you're talking to your buddies about it, you know what? You won't sound like an idiot.